Mr. Menzies, the Australian Prime Minister, stated this morning that the international position seemed to have steadied itself. Experience suggested, he declared, that there was a better opportunity for success while discussion of details continued. He added, however, that the crisis was not ended. <clears throat> Food rationing and control of exports have now been introduced in many countries. Italian restaurants may now serve only one dish of meat, fish or ham. And in Libya, the governor, Marshal Balbo, has established a control of foodstuffs. In Danzig, shopping hours are limited to restrict the sales of food, ships are prohibited from leaving with cargoes, and the removal of timber is banned. Poland has cut down the petrol allowance for private cars to a maximum of five liters a day, but food and other commodities can still be pur purchased normally. The Netherlands have placed an embargo on the export of petrol and oils. Greece prohibits the export of foodstuffs and fuels. Similar measures have been taken in some parts of the empire. For instance, in Palestine, the High Commissioner has declared that the following commodities are controlled. Wheat, flour, bread, rice, sugar, coffee, fresh meat, butter and its substitutes, and edible fats. There is no anxiety about the supplies of staple foods. Kenya prohibits the export of agricultural produce except tea, coffee and dairy goods. The governor of Mauritius, who has assumed emergency powers, is also instituting measures for food control. The British ambassador in Shanghai has issued regulations prohibiting the transfer of British ships anywhere in China except on the authority of the Board of Trade. Two prominent Italian newspapers, the Popolo di Roma and the Stampa, were suppressed yesterday. The reason for this step is believed to be that they put the international situation in a needlessly alarming light. Yesterday, for the first time, articles appeared in all the Italian papers recommending the evacuation of cities. Railway traffic in Germany is to be still further restricted, and in future the railways will not undertake to carry any private passengers. The German traffic minister in a broadcast said that this step is being taken to avoid the serious delay in bringing food to the big cities. In some places, the delay is leading to great disorganization. Germany has assured Denmark and Lithuania that she will respect their neutrality. President Le Pen of France has received a telegram from King George VI on the occasion of his 68th birthday, in the course of which His Majesty says, at a time when a grave crisis is upsetting European affairs, the complete understanding which today unites our two countries gives me hope that their joint efforts will be crowned with success. President Le Pen replies that he shares His Majesty's hope. In Paris today, 47 special trains will each take a thousand schoolchildren to various places in the provinces to be safe from air raids. All Paris cafes and restaurants have now been ordered to close at night from 11 o'clock onwards. Car headlights are banned and motorists are warned to drive very slowly. All French broadcasting stations are handed over from today to the military authorities. A single national news bulletin has been read from all stations since yesterday. The French government has sent General Vegan on a special mission to the Near East, and he reached Beirut today. The head of the Turkish military mission to London and Paris, General Orbe, said on his return to Ankara yesterday that the staff talks had resulted in complete understanding. It is reported in Istanbul that all German ships in the neighborhood have been ordered to proceed to Russian Black Sea ports. Russia has decided to strengthen the garrisons on the western frontier. The official Russian news agency, TASS, 
explains that this is because the situation in Eastern Europe has been aggravated and because of the possibility of all kinds of surprises. Romania is now building fortifications on her frontier with Soviet Russia along the valley of the river Nista. <clears throat> Japan's new Prime Minister, General Abe, and nine other members of the cabinet were sworn in by the Emperor today. As forecast yesterday, General Abe also takes the portfolio of foreign affairs the Minister of War is General Hatta, who is formerly a Chief Aide de Camp to the Emperor, and the Navy Minister is Vice Admiral Yoshida, Commander in Chief of the Combined Fleet. Mr. Katsuo Aoki becomes Minister of Finance, and Mr. Kanemitsu is Minister of Overseas Affairs. <clears throat> the leading Japanese newspapers today urge the new Premier to start with a clean slate in foreign policy. But the Kokumin Shimbun, which represents army views, maintains that in spite of the German-Soviet pact, there should be no compromise with Britain in China. President Roosevelt told the press yesterday that the shelving by Congress of his neutrality policy had undoubtedly contrib contributed to the present crisis. The President has sent a fast American Coast Guard cutter to Norway to fetch home Mr. Morgenthau, Secretary to the Treasury, who was on holiday. The cutter is expected to reach Newfoundland from Norway in four days. President Roosevelt has stated that only ships carrying defensive weapons would be allowed to enter the United States in future. He said the inspection of several foreign ships now taking place in American ports was to ascertain whether they could be armed for offensive purposes. The British liners Aquitania and Transylvania, the French liner Normandy, and the German liner Bremen are all being searched in New York. After the Bremen was searched yesterday, 17 unidentified passengers were removed to Ellis Island under police guard. The German embassy has protested against the Bremen's detention. American underwriters have cancelled all war risk insurance on German and Italian ships and on shipments to, from, and through Italian and German ports. Anti-aircraft units and additional pursuit planes of the United States Army are now guarding the Panama Canal zone and military guards are being placed on vessels using the canal. And now here's a late message. A Warsaw communique just issued announces further Polish defensive measures in connection with the German military occupation of Slovakia. The communique states, Several months ago, Germany started an aggressive policy towards Poland. The press campaign, the menacing statements of the statesmen leading the policy of Germany, the systematic provocation of frontier incidents, and finally, the, the constantly increasing concentrations of mobilized armed forces at the Polish frontiers constitute an obvious proof of this. <clears throat> the Pan American Airways flying boat, Californian Clipper, which has been making a survey flight across the Pacific, has arrived at Auckland, New Zealand. Round London, 110 mechanical excavators began work at 7 this morning, excavating earth for sandbags. Heavy lorries are distributing the bags throughout the London Civil Defence region. Members of the Civil Air Guard under the age of 32 are now being asked to stand by for further training as RAF pilots or crew. The Air Guard consists mostly of qualified civilian pilots who undertake to serve with the RAF if needed in an emergency. A Labour deputation called on the Prime Minister last night requesting the immediate evacuation of women, children and cripples as a precaution against a sudden outbreak of war. The Prime Minister replied that the government held the view that the evacuation was not necessary at the present stage. Exchequer returns for last week 
published in London last night, were normal for this season of the year. Income was ten and a third million pounds, almost exactly the same as in the corresponding week last year. But expenditure was about six million pounds greater. Total revenue to date in this financial year is two hundred and seventy four million pounds against two hundred and fifty four millions at the same time a year ago. The first steps towards a more liberal rule in Yugoslavia and the granting of a large measure of self-rule to the Croats were taken last night by the new Yugoslav government. The new government is headed by the former premier, Mr. Svetkovic, and the Croat leader, Dr. Macek, is to be deputy premier. The, the cabinet is regarded as one of complete national unity because it includes altogether five Croats three of the opposition Serb party, one Slovenian and one Bosnian Mohammedan, in addition to eight members of the Serb government party. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs remains in the hands of Monsieur Cinka Markovic. The first act of the new government was to dissolve both houses of the present parliament. They have been given power to introduce a new election act and laws granting a free press and the right of public assembly and association. Here in England, skeleton staffs of teachers are on duty today at schools in all the evacuation areas. They are giving instructions to parents and children who were not able to attend yesterday to hear about the arrangements for the evacuation rehearsal tomorrow. All arrangements for the rehearsal are now complete and children will attend at their usual school hour with a day's supply of food and changes of clothes. In a few cases, plans have been made for the children to start a little earlier than the normal school hours. Children are looking forward to the rehearsal as a big adventure, and their parents appear quite calm and pleased that the preparations are so well advanced. In Downing Street this morning, large crowds watched with interest the movements of ministers and visitors to the Prime Minister and the Foreign Office. A stretch of one of London's main underground railways, the Bakerloo Line, is closed today to allow workmen to carry out certain operations. Special buses are running for the benefit of passengers who would normally have travelled by underground between Piccadilly Circus and the Elephant and Castle. Her Majesty the Queen and the Princesses, who are staying at Balmoral Castle while the King is in London, went shopping in Balata yesterday. They returned to the castle a short time before a heavy thunderstorm broke over the district. In India, the Maharaja of Bikaneer has issued a statement refuting suggestions that in recent negotiations about federation, the Indian princes were trying to take advantage of the European crisis. The statement says that the loyalty of the Indian states has no price and is not a matter for bargain or barter. The Maharaja recalls that last September he was the first to place the entire resources of the state at the king's disposal. The offer of the princes, the statement goes on, was obviously not confined to that particular crisis, but stands good for all emergencies such as the present and it can safely be predicted that the princes of India will rally like one man round their beloved King Emperor and stand solid behind the Empire should war unfortunately break out. The Palestine government today issued regulations for maintaining stocks of essential commodities and controlling food and other supplies in case of emergency. Prices and consumption are to be controlled. The names of the two British police inspectors who were killed by a bomb explosion in Jerusalem yesterday were announced this morning. They are Mr. Ronald Barker and Mr. Rafe Cairns. The Australian cabinet held a special meeting today. The Prime Minister, Mr. Menzies, afterwards stated that the international situation had become more hopeful in the past 48 hours.
In Hong Kong and Singapore, the authorities have now lifted the restrictions imposed yesterday on telegrams. It is learnt in Tokyo today that the Japanese liner Yasukuni Maru, which is now at Hamburg, has taken on board 240 Japanese women and children out of the 500 Japanese living in Germany. Other ships are on their way to pick up the remainder and also 1,200 Japanese in Great Britain and 450 in France. No arrangements have yet been made for the departure of Japanese from this country. The French Minister for the Colonies, Monsieur Georges Mondel, announced today that the King of Annam had called at the Colonial Office to say that he intended returning to Annam as quickly as possible in order to place the whole weight of his authority at the service of France. That is the end of the news.